What's up YouTube? I'm Valentin the Mad and this is a good review of Dead Space 2. One of the main gameplay features of Dead Space series is strategic dismemberment. You have to dismember enemies in order to weaken and kill them. It's a fun concept and it needs to be discussed. The choice whether to review game 2 or 3 wasn't very difficult either. From the videos I saw the gore effects are nearly identical. Game 2 looked a bit more interesting and it didn't feature microtransactions. That's right, game 3 has microtransactions. In single player. In a paid title. So that's space 2 it is. With that aside, is there more to the gore system other than the strategic dismemberment and does it deliver a responsive experience? Let's find out. I'll be reviewing every aspect of the game's gore effects and the score will be set based on four categories. Body damage, environment, animations and sounds, the feel. Each limb or tentacle has two points of imputation. The head can be dismembered and so can the tail. The looks aren't incredibly gory. You can see the meat and the bone, but there's not much blood splattered around the imputation. However, that's not the big issue. The big issue is that this is it. There is no body damage other than those dismemberment mechanics. There is no mutilation for the torso. No decals for non-dismembering hits. No wounds on impalement and no body damage for the flamethrower. Very, very disappointing. The game has boss fights and several damage sponge characters. It's usually a shoot the yellow vulnerable part fight and characters can take a lot of damage before they die. At this point, I usually talk about the need for a more detailed mutilation system for boss characters to actually make those fights fun but there's no point talking about it when the body damage is so bloody limited for every single character. If you still wanna hear my crazy vision for boss fights, you can find the link to a video I made on the subject in the description below. As for the player character, the deaths are not bad at all. They will often involve brutal execution animations that are followed by dismemberment. The body damage could be nastier, but it still is much more exciting than what we have in most games and props to Visceral for doing a good job here. What the game is lacking in that aspect is some progression while the player is still alive. Seeing the suit get damaged wouldn't work with the game's concept, but I do think that the player could get progressively covered in blood as he kills necromorphs in close range. The suit should not be perfectly clean after this. Blood will stain the environment on impacts and stains are supposed to work with the blood fountain effect you see on amputations. In theory. The result of an average fight, however, looks very mild. Watch the process. And now here's the aftermath after I move the bodies. Doesn't look very good, does it? So what went wrong here? The issues are the size, the looks and the amount of stains spawned. For the most part, the blood stains are small red stripes and the game doesn't spawn many of them, which means that you will see blood spilling effects going into nowhere quite frequently. Size does matter when it comes to blood splatter in video games and Dead Space 2 is a prime example of that. The game would need to spawn a ridiculous amount of those decals to make the aftermath of a fight with a single enemy look more or less right. But there's a much easier solution. The decals could be two or three times the size and have a more generic look to them. The blood stains in Killing Floor 2 are a good example of that. And to make sure that the player never sees blood puff going into nowhere, the game would still need to spawn more stains than it does now. Spawn them where the spilling effects land. Spawn them on the walls and the floor around the character. If in doubt whether a stain should be spawned or not, 
spawn the damn thing anyways. Larger stains and generous peeling would make an enormous difference in how the game feels. How is the mess in the long term? Blood stains disappear after a minute or so, but can also disappear sooner once a certain threshold is reached. Bodies disappear on a ridiculously low threshold of 5 enemies. So yeah, you're not going to have a very good aftermath experience. I'd actually rant about the importance of that if the blood spilling mechanics were good, but they're simply not. I really don't care that much if the 5 red stripes I see after killing an enemy disappear. Now animations is the aspect where the series shines. You have response animations on impact and the enemy's behavior changes as they lose body parts. The changes in behavior are very cool. When they lose an arm or a tentacle, they will have one less thing to attack you with. When they lose a leg, they will start crawling and grab you from below. When they lose the head, they will try to attack you blindly or play dead and jump back up as soon as they feel you nearby. I call this functional dismemberment. Amputations are more than just a visual effect on death and that's awesome. I do think that there would be room for more interesting behaviors if the game had proper damage for the torso, non-dismembering hits and for burning, but when it comes to dismemberment, I have absolutely no complaints. On death, the characters go ragdoll for the most part. Death animations would make things more brutal, and I think that there is room for that in this game. You have respawn sounds on impact, awesome sounds on amputations, characters react on pain and scream on death. All of those sound great. Stomping is fun for the sound alone, and the blood spilling sounds better than it looks. The character sounds are brutal and awesome, so we'll never have a quiet fight. I'm actually not surprised by that. Dead Space 2 has a horror aspect to it, and in that type of games, sound is extremely important, and Visceral nailed it. Is functional dismemberment alone enough to make a game feel responsive? No. It's an important part for a gore system, but the keyword here is part. The body damage is still very limited and the blood spilling mechanics are unexciting to say the least. A game will never feel responsive if you shoot the torso and see no reaction, or if you see a huge blood fountain that barely leaves any stains. So the score for body damage is 8 out of 13. The score for environment is 9 out of 13. The score for animations and sounds is 24 out of 13. I give the feel a score of 4 out of 10. So this gives the gore system of Dead Space 2 a total score of 45 out of 100. The functional dismemberment is a great feature for any game where you fight superhuman characters and it should absolutely be the standard. Even with regular human enemies, I don't think that dismemberment should mean insta-death. But even though it is a very fun system, there's not much more than that in the gore department. Gore aside, would I recommend this game? I may not be the person to answer that. Futuristic settings and horror games are not my thing, and that's why I'm reviewing a very specific aspect in those type of games. However, I can say that Dead Space 2 feels very solid, and even though it's not my thing, I still had a fairly enjoyable time in it. Hope you enjoyed watching the review. Let me know how you feel in the comment section, and if you liked the video, subscribe and share it with your friends. You can find the link to all of my Go reviews in the video description. Until next time!